In the bitter winters of World War II, survival often came down to the simplest materials and, honestly, the cleverest use of them. Soldiers on both sides faced freezing rain, collapsing canvas, and the deadly chill that came with damp trenches and unheated camps. Supply lines were inconsistent, and tents soaked through in just a few days. Yet in 1942, an overlooked engineering trick spread among frontline units, a way to turn a basic oilcloth tarp into a self-heating water-resistant shelter using nothing more than fire smoke. This wasn't a luxury. It was survival engineering. The concept emerged among Soviet and Finnish troops battling in subarctic forests and was later adapted by Allied engineers who studied captured field gear. Soldiers discovered that if oilcloth, a fabric coated in linseed or castor oil, was treated correctly, it could absorb smoke residue that made it not only more waterproof, but also capable of radiating retained heat long after a fire died down. It was a low-tech marvel, built from ordinary supplies, yet its performance remains, honestly, unmatched by modern synthetics. Oilcloth wasn't new. It had been around for centuries as rain gear and wagon covers. But early in World War II, when rubberized tarps were scarce, field units turned to linseed-treated fabric as a waterproofing substitute. Initially, these tarps stiffened in cold weather and cracked under strain. The turning point came when troops noticed that after several weeks of use near smoky fires, the tarps actually became softer, darker, and more water-resistant. The smoke itself was altering the fabric's chemistry. The process was simple, but, you know, kind of accidental. Smoke from campfires, rich in oils, resins and carbon, would cling to the slightly sticky linseed surface, sealing microcracks and creating a thin, insulating layer of soot and tar. Over time, this coating transformed the tarp into what was, basically, a flexible thermal blanket. Soldiers soon realized that when they hung these smoke-treated oilcloths low over a small fire pit, the material not only trapped the heat more efficiently, but also radiated it back down, warming the space inside without open flames. Military engineers in Finland and Russia refined this technique into a system known as the smoke-cured bivouac. By suspending oilcloth sheets above campfires for several hours before use, they intentionally infused the fabric with heat-trapping carbon compounds. What started as grime became a strategic advantage. The shelter that got stronger, warmer, and more resilient with every use. To understand how it worked, you need to look at the design itself. The shelter began with a simple A-frame setup, two poles supporting an angled sheet over a shallow pit. A small fire was built at the base, positioned so smoke would roll upward under the fabric surface before escaping through a vent gap at the top. As the smoke circulated, the oilcloth absorbed a portion of the vapours, particularly the tar and fine soot particles. This coating darkened the fabric, increasing its ability to absorb and radiate heat. At night, once the fire died, the still warm oilcloth continued to release stored warmth into the air below. It wasn't direct heat but a steady, subtle warmth that could mean the difference between frostbite and rest. Soldiers noted that temperatures inside a properly set-up oilcloth shelter stayed several degrees higher than the air outside, even after the flames went out. The second advantage was durability. 
Smoke particles filled microscopic gaps in the fabric, repelling moisture more effectively than oil alone. In rain or snow, water rolled off the surface instead of seeping through. The combination of oil and soot created a semi-sealed material, one that remained flexible in freezing weather and resisted tearing. The secret lay in balance. If the smoke exposure lasted too long, the fabric stiffened. If it was too brief, the waterproofing effect was weak. Manuals recovered from Soviet field units after the war described the ideal treatment as one hour of smoking per side, enough to darken the cloth but keep it pliable. You know, what made the World War II smoke-treated oilcloth truly remarkable is how it blended physics and practicality. The combination of linseed oil, carbon and heat created what engineers today would probably call a passive heat retention surface. Basically, it acted like a radiant panel that absorbed infrared energy from the fire, held it in the soot layer, and then slowly released it back into the enclosed space. These days, modern reflective tarps use metallic coatings to get similar results, but honestly, those coatings degrade pretty quickly, and, well, they can't repair themselves. The oilcloth, on the other hand, could be renewed endlessly. All soldiers had to do was re-smoke the fabric every few weeks, restoring its dark sheen and sealing fresh pores. It was an early form of maintenance-based insulation, and it didn't need any special tools, just fire and, frankly, a bit of patience. Field reports from 1944 describe how smoke-hardened tarps stayed serviceable through entire winters, even under heavy snow load. In contrast, those factory-issued tents often needed replacing within just a few months. British and American engineers took notice. Post-war field manuals on Arctic survival actually reference so-called carbon-cured fabrics as a good example of how exposure to controlled smoke improved both waterproofing and heat reflection. Recreating the World War II oilcloth method today is honestly surprisingly straightforward. You start with untreated cotton canvas, or really any thick natural fibre tarp will do, then melt equal parts linseed oil and beeswax, about a one-to-one -one ratio by weight, and brush that mixture evenly across the fabric. Once you've done that, hang the tarp so it can dry for, oh, 24 to 48 hours. After the coating sets, you'll want to suspend the cloth above a small, smoky fire. Ideally, one made from pine, oak or birch, since those woods make a rich, resinous smoke. Let the smoke saturate both sides for about an hour. The result is a darkened, lightly sticky surface that sheds water and, interestingly enough, radiates warmth when it's exposed to heat. When you use it as a lean-to or a tent cover, it traps rising air, keeping the shelter noticeably warmer and all without direct contact with flames. For preppers, off-grid builders, or anyone interested in historical survival methods, this process is still one of the simplest ways to create a durable, weatherproof, sheltering material using just basic resources. Even modern campers who use synthetic gear can, you know, apply the concept by designing fire-safe smoke channels under tarp covers to distribute warmth through convection rather than direct flame contact, a safer and honestly more sustainable way to heat an enclosure. The Second World War oilcloth shelter stands as a perfect example of wartime innovation born from necessity. 
It required no special equipment, just a deep understanding of natural materials and human need. While armies fought with steel and fuel, survival often depended on those who knew how to turn smoke, oil, and cloth into life-saving heat. In an era obsessed with technology, the lesson still matters. Nature, chemistry, and human ingenuity can work together to create self-reliant systems that honestly outperform anything mass-produced. The soldiers who slept under those blackened tarps may never have known the science behind it, but they knew one thing. When the fire went out, their shelter still worked. For more forgotten wartime inventions and survival engineering stories that you know still hold value today, subscribe to In the Beginning and share this video. History's real genius often hides in the details of survival, and sometimes the warmest shelter is the one built with smoke.